Skybird. This is Dropkick with a red dash alpha message in two parts. Break, break. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, we had some major audio issue earlier. I'm not quite sure what happened, but uh, it really uh, did not go down and record properly. There's a, a lot of uh, problems there. Anyways, so uh, we're back with this video. And uh, as you can see, here's the number 11 uh, scalpel blade. Uh, a little dirty. It's uh, not too old of a blade. And I'm just using that to point out the fluorescence on the edge of the gel cap, this Advil. You can see it fluorescing through and uh, some interesting little optical anomalies there. And I'm going to ramp this up to a few hundred milliwatts and then pump it right up to about two and a half watts and see what it does to this gel cap. This is at 10 times magnification, so it's not too close. You can see generally what's going on and uh, how the light scatters and just heats this thing up and destroys it. I just had an added bill, happened to have one sitting on my desk, so I figured, okay, let's toss this under the microscope and see what happens. So this kind of gives you an idea of the uh, power in that one-tenth of a millimeter beam, that uh, tiny little beam when it hits. It's a lot of energy. That's the interesting part with uh, laser light. And, uh, and what makes it so dangerous is you can focus it down to such a tiny spot size. You can't do this with any other source of light. Laser is uh, very unique for this, which is the reason why it's such an eye hazard. Um, this will really mess your eyes up if you get hit by it. Uh, my microscope's got a filter on it to protect the camera and my eyes should I look through it. But I use the uh, screen on my laptop to display and use that as my reference point just to be on the safe side. In case something fails or something goes wrong, I just damage the camera and not my eyes. So you can see this, this Advil is pretty much cooked. No pun intended. And this is a Q-tip or a cotton swab, if you will. And we're going to take a shot through this. A little bit of smoke is highlighting the beam. You can see its path. You see the right side blackened from the inside. And it's just slicing through that like it's not even there. And this is white. And white is hard to, to burn because of its uh, lack of pigment. There's uh, nothing to absorb the energy. Misconception is people think uh, laser beams are hot. <clears throat> and they're only as hot as the target and how much it can absorb that energy. This is a small sample of magnetite. Uh, it's about the size of this grains of sand. And it's uh, resting on a magnet or attached to a magnet. And I'm same to have the same spot size. And I'm going to blast this with about two and a half watts of uh, laser energy. And the interesting that I noticed with this is... Uh, from what I've read, magnetite is basically iron ore, and this was uh, obtained at the local freshwater beach at the lake and pulled out of the sand with a magnet. And uh, straight out of the jar, it, under the light, it melts and uh, it, it fuses all the little pieces together. So you're essentially welding uh, iron with this or steel. I'm not quite sure what kind of uh, ore this is. There's at uh, 30 times magnification. And you can see now as I pick out this little piece, you see all the pieces that fuse together into one chunk. It's pretty neat stuff. It's amazing how hot that little spot can get. Mind you, there's not much mass to these little grains to dissipate enough heat for it not to hit a critical uh, point where it melts. But uh, impressive nonetheless. Here's another uh, sample of the magnetite. Uh, this, I'm freehanding it with the laser head, which is why it's winging all over the frame there. And I'm going to hit this again with about two and a half watts. Uh, spot size of about uh, 0.10 of a millimeter. I could get a little bit smaller, but it's hard to keep it on, uh, on that size, especially when you're holding the laser head in your hand. And if you look to the right of your screen, you'll see some pinkish light. That is uh, the upper 700 to, say, 8,500 nanometer of uh, near-infrared. And this infrared is being produced by the heat. It's, uh, it's bouncing around inside of the lenses there because uh, the filter that I have on does not filter IR light, which is, again, why you don't want to be sticking your eyeballs over the microscope. And use a camera for this. Keep yourself safe. 
There's a nice steady flow of IR coming off of that. I'm not sure how uh, dangerous that is, but I don't want to find out the hard way. Uh, maybe we'll try some more filters and uh, set up some filters for IR and for the uh, 450 nanometer uh, laser light and see if I can get a more clear shot with this magnetite. That will make for another interesting clip. And here's the uh, same sample at 30 times magnification. That's a little piece of uh, braided copper wire, desoldering braid. And I can use that just to sweep all this extra crumbs out of the way. And get a better view of the uh, fused blob that I just made. You see a lot of shininess in it. A lot of little sections that look like nice shiny steel. So what I read was iron ore. So I don't know if uh, iron uh, and steel are essentially the same thing or not. But it's a nice little, uh, nice little sample. It's that that is really tiny. That thing is probably only about a milli millimeter long, uh, maybe a little less. So the very tiny crumb, but at thirty times, you know, again, you know, it's going to look a lot bigger than it is. So interesting stuff. Here is a uh, copper uh, desoldering braid and a little string of solder sitting on top of it. And I'm just heating up the uh, copper. And as the solder melts, it's pulling the uh, copper almost out of frame. And again, you can see the IR light coming through, generated from the heat from the copper in this uh, case. But interesting, you can, you can solder with a beam of light in 2020. Pretty neat stuff. All of this, by the way, sitting on top of a razor blade, if you're wondering what the backdrop is there. Let's say a straight razor, a flat, those little square razor blades. So I couldn't quite get it to flow like I wanted, but close enough. Here's a uh, cheap plastic piece. Just some crappy common plastic you find in toys or whatever, flashlights, etc. I think this was part of a battery holder for three AAAs or something from a flashlight. You see the light pass straight through and in through that hole. The light's entering from the top and going towards the center. Uh, it just melts through it like nothing. I also run a fume extractor, a small fume extractor on your, on your bench because you do not want to breathe uh, fumes cr created by ablation, by a uh, by a, by light, it's uh, it can add a, a bunch of more chemicals that normally wouldn't be there, which are carcinogenic. And here I slowed it down a little bit by turning back the power, maybe to about a watt and a half, maybe a watt and a quarter, just to watch it slowly pass through. Too much, uh, and I turn it up, and you get a flame. You see, you you got to watch class four class four lasers are quite the fire hazard, and you don't want that burning up the underneath your microscope there. Here's a uh, pass, same thing, but with the uh, light off. I figured maybe you'd see something a little extra there. And that's it. So uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to uh, rate, subscribe, and uh, click that notification bell. I'll be trying to upload at least one video a night. Um, maybe every couple of nights. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Thanks again. Take care.